Hey everybody, Sneaky Narcotic, back at it again making another Guilds of Ravnica spoiler video today. Um, there wasn't as many spoilers as there was yesterday, but it doesn't mean the spoilers from today wasn't good. Um, they were awesome. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, but first guys, please like, subscribe, uh, and comment down below. I really would appreciate it. It helped my channel out a lot and helped me out a lot to know what you guys like and to know that I still have support. But, let us get into the spoiler videos because that is what you guys came here for today. Um, Tomb of the Guild Pack. Five generic. It's an artifact. It is a rare artifact. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. Um, add one mana of any color. Uh, tap it and add one mana of any color. The flavor text says, Reading it has given me a glimpse of what makes this deeply flawed city so very magnificent. Dofenbon. So that's very interesting. Obviously he's not holding it in here because he would have a blue hand. But um, that's, that's very interesting that um, they're going this... Just recently, um, especially with yesterday, let me see if I can get it pulled up here. Um, they printed a card that was in Spanish. Yeah, this one here. Um, which ended up being like the wind, uh, window of the guild pact or something like that. Uh, and it, you know, it, multi it gives multicolor creatures you control. Plus one, plus one. So it's an anthem for multicolored creatures. So I guess multicolored creatures is uh, is about to become a tribe, which is interesting. Um, they definitely have multiple. I mean, there's one, um, there's two, three, four. There's a lot of uh, a lot of creatures that would make it a good tribe. I think. Um, so that's all I really have to say on Tomb of the Guild Pack, or Tome, Tome of the Guild Pack. Um, the next one is a very interesting mythic rare, Captive Audience. Uh, five generic, one black, one red, so expensive as hell. Enchantment, mythic rare, Captive Audience enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Um, and then it's... Your life total becomes four. <laughs> Discard your hand. Each opponent creates five 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. This is interesting. I, um, there was a comment when I went on and looked at this that said... So either uh, pick one, uh, you lose the game. You lose the game... Or you lose the game. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, that, that's really just dependent on other things. Like, um, if you have a board wipe, I'd say go ahead and let them have their five uh, zombies on your upkeep, you know. Um, and the other one, discard your hand. A lot of times when you're playing Gruul or sometimes when you're playing just white by itself, uh, discarding your hand is not such a bad thing because you probably don't have a hand. Um... Even then, like, white, if your life total becomes four, you probably are okay with that because you can gain some life this turn. So, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's not necessarily a, lo a loss. That being said, uh, I like it. I, I like it in Commander just for this. Each opponent uh, creates five 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. That sounds awesome. Uh, that sounds really awesome. Actually, I like it in Commander before the your life total becomes four. That's hilarious. I can imagine getting down to my last opponent, and I'm like, okay, so do you want to discard your hand? Do you want to lose your life total? Or do you do you want to lose the game? <laughs> because that's exactly what that is going to say. Um, in T ways, mm. Biogenic Ooze. Five generic, two green creature Ooze. It's a mythic rare. When Biogenic Ooze enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green ooze creature token at the beginning of your end step. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each ooze you control. Uh, and then it has the ability, uh, pay one in th uh, one generic three green mana, create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. Um, and it, of course, is a 2-2 ooze. Uh, I like it. Because of because of this simple factor, um, 
Biogen uses a five cost that comes down for two two, but it's a five cost that comes down for two two with another two two because when it, cre it enters the battlefield, it creates another body that's a two two green ooze. The end of the turn that it comes down on, um, it becomes a three three, and the ooze becomes a three three. Uh, and that's just having one biogenic ooze. If you get another biogenic ooze out the next, basically, especially with it being in green, and even if we had, because let's be honest, when you see a triple green mana like that, uh, you're not, you know, you want to think that this would go in a Simic deck, but with triple green mana, this is more than likely going to be in a mono green deck, uh, maybe splashing a color, but not necessarily a Simic deck. Um, I mean, think about it like this. How hard is it to get Niv-Mizzet down on turn um, without playing literally, literally four Shocklands and four Checklands? Um, it's really hard. Uh, trust me, I I just made a video about it. Um, and I literally got mana screwed like once or twice trying to get Niv-Mizzet out on turn. So um, to get Biogenic Ooze out, is not that hard but to get his ability to make an ooze army or as my buddy would call it the ooze horde um yeah that, that's that's gonna make you want to go green i believe in t ways um i'm going to look this up on my phone while i talk about the other card uh the next card but i don't think that in standard right now there's any oozes um, other than this, I guess, in the next standard would be an ooze. Uh, I'll look it up. Magic the Gathering. Gathering card database. And I'll look it up while I talk about the next card. So the next card is uh, Sunder Shaman. It's another uh, one of the cycle of color, 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 color. Um, two colors, then two colors. Uh, that's a this time it's a red red green green creature giant shaman Ooh, a giant shaman I love creature types guys I, I if you know anything about me I love creature types uh <laughs> anyways uh giant shaman uncommon of course uh sunder shaman can't be blocked by more than one creature when Sunder Shaman deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Um, so I like that it reminds me a lot of a card that uh, has seen a lot of play. And granted, the card is way better than uh, Sunder Shaman, but it's seen a lot of play. And that is uh, Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, reminds me of this card right here. Control plus 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 plus. Um, Cause Steel Leaf Champion can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. I uh, granted this one can still be chump blocked. I don't know why. It just reminds me of this because it's a 5 4 for 3. And this is a 5 5 for 4 with a, with a similar ish ability, kind of. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Can't be blocked by a uh, creature with power 2 or less. It seems like the same thing. I think this will see play. I like that now they're making these. Uh, these. And I mean, I guess the others were trying to remember off the top of my head what the other. Uh, creatures are in this cycle um, from Guilds of Ravnica. Let's see. In Golgari, you have Fine Broker, and uh, is it you have Crackling Drake? In Conv in Selesnia, you have Knight of Autumn. Okay, that no, you're right. That's that's a good card. Uh, Demir has hmm, two blue, two black, and Demir. I can't think of it. And then, what's the one? What's the one? Uh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to go, trying to go and think real quick uh, about the other cycle. Um, there was Simic. There was Demir. There was Is it? There was uh, I'm not Simic. Selesnya. Demir. Is it? Uh, 
you get my draft. Um, it, it's basically these cards have been good. I can't, I can't wish, I wish, I wish I could remember the one from Demir. Um, I feel like I regressed because I was trying to find the fifth color. I and I can't think of it now. Boros, Boros. Uh, I think that one was True Fire Captain. Um, which hasn't seen a lot of play. Uh, but it's whatever, you know. Um, I think this one will see play because enchantments are important, artifacts are important, of course. But it also is a huge creature. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see this um, get, somehow gaining trample. And that being the way uh, people win. And not just because it's destroying enchantments and it's a cool card. But because it's a big card for four. It's a 5-5. Five, five, and then it can't be blocked by more than one creature that just seems good to me i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm overthinking it let me know what you guys think below um here is the next one repudate and replicate so this is another very interesting card to me um repudate says uh pay one uh, two hybrid mana of green and blue uh and it's an instant eight Let's see, what's the rarity? The rarity is rare. So it's a rare instant. And it says counter target activated ability or triggered ability. Um, and that is very similar to disallow. Uh, that's what this reminds me of is a good look at disallow. I hold on just a second. Okay. So Disallow said it was a card from Aether Revolt saying counter target spell, uh, activated ability, or triggered ability. This card um, was like awesome to have, freaking terrible to play against because I was so, I had like, okay, imagine me, uh, almost a, a new ish player. Uh, I was out, uh, I had Aether Revolt, but. Kaladesh. Ka okay, so Aether Revolt was out and Kaladesh was about to come out when I started Magic. And then this card here, uh, uh, just having, it, it made me have to learn what activated and triggered abilities are. Um, because, you know, counter target spell, that's, you know, that's a given. There's always going to be counter magic and, and Magic the Gathering. But activated uh, ability or triggered ability as a new player i didn't even know what that was and for those that don't um where is my let's go to page two uh activated ability would be something along the lines of uh this biogenic ooze being able to make uh other oozes that's an activated ability so i could pay for repudate and tell them hey i countered your ability you don't actually get to make play the ooze but you did pay the mana for it um a triggered ability and i i, I wanted to go to specifically to this card just because if i get to talk about this card anymore it's it's a good good thing to talk about yesterday i was saying that you know wizards has definitely lost their freaking minds when they made a card like this mirror march um it's a triggered ability so you could count because whenever whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, that's the trigger. Um, this says it can counter triggered abilities. So it would counter for, like I was saying, bringing a demanding dragon and just having an obscene amount of demanding dragons enter the battlefield at the same time. Uh, was what I was talking about. Well, for two mana, I just took out your demanding dragons. Uh, granted, I still have to deal with your demanding dragon. Um, and instead of playing this as a counter spell, um, this is the reason why you wouldn't play this as a counter spell is because you'd get this other ability, rep uh, replicate, one generic, one green, one blue. It's a, still a rare, but it is a sorcery. And the sorcery part of this split card says create a token that's a copy of a creature you control. Now, I, I, was, I was sitting there thinking about this. Why, 
would we need more quasi look that's not how you spell quasi quasi duplicates when quasi duplicate itself counts as eight quasi duplicates because of jump start you know create a token that's a copy of target creature you control double blue and uh one generic so it's still the same mana cost it's also a rare granted but I I brew a lot with quasi duplicate, and the number one thing is to get your quasi duplicate in your hand. Um, now you definitely have eight copies of quasi duplicate and twelve if you count the jumpstart ability, um, and I like that because that's just like begging you to play the same card and just keep it alive or the token alive because this is gonna make a, to a a copy of of the token too, you know. Um, so I like, I really do like Replicate and, uh, Repudate. Um, just cause it, it feels, it feels good to be able to start countering these triggered abilities, activated abilities. Um, I, I'm trying to think of any cancerous or triggered, uh, cancerous activated or triggered abilities right now. And I'm blanking super bad. <sighs> Excuse me, but I'm sure you guys yourselves could think about uh, think of some. Um, I'm sure if I had given the time, I could probably think of some. I I kind of didn't have long to make these spoiler videos today, but uh, anyways, let's go to the next card. Um, Collision Colossus. Let's do to do. And go over. So, Collision Colossus. Collision is uh, one generic, one hybrid of red or green. And Colossus is red and a green uh, mana. They're both instances, they both have rare uh, as their rarity. And Collision reads, Collision deals 6 damage to target creature with flying. Colossus reads, target creature gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> um, because we're, especially in Gruel, you're going to be making big creatures, but on top of that, you don't have a lot of things to protect you from, uh, from flyers, and unless you want to just play straight up four copies of plummet which i always would put into my sideboard um plummet mtg uh yeah four copies of plummet then it's really not worth it to have plummet on your main board and it, and you're going to that's going to lose you a game just because flyers will outrun Gruel. You know, not a lot of flyers in Gruel. So being able to deal six damage to flyers is great. And then it's it's like saying, well, you know, if you're not playing against flyers, then let's play Colossus. Because Colossus will give you a card a tramp give card tramples. I like that. Um I'm not I don't think I should let's minus out of this. I, I can't really remember what card it was that uh, when you attack with it, it gives another creature uh, XX or X slash zero uh, into one turn, which X is its power. I won't go any further than uh, three pages, but this card would be good to put on that card and then allow it to give the other uh, your other creature plus four uh plus four plus whatever the actual toughness is of that creature um yeah again i'm, I'm thinking combat tricks on that creature if I, if you, I wish i had that creature pulled up right now um the the next card guys i um <laughs> do not know exactly how long i want to spend on this card because Oh my god. Persistent uh, Petitioners. One generic, one blue, creature, human, advisor, and it's an, it's a common. It's a common. One generic mana, tap it, target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. Uh, it deserves its common there. Uh, tap four untapped advisors you control, target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard. 
uh, okay, well, you know, you need to make a, you need to make a full play set come out to do that. Uh, a deck can have any number of cards named Persistent Petitioners. What? <laughs> they made a blue card that is basically Rat Colony, but about, um, about milling. Instead of trying to overrun them with rats, it's about milling, milling. Um, yeah, Relentless Rat, if you want to go any further, um, that's the other card I was thinking about. Uh, maybe Shadow Acolyte, I want to say, is the card I'm thinking about. Mm, MTG. Ah, Shadow Born Acolyte, yes. This one was another card that was like that. I... And, and this card, you know, Rat Colony is just stupid to me. Uh, and so is Persistent. Well, Persistent Rat's a little more different because it gives all your rats plus one, plus one. Instead of just <laughs> making... Uh, wait, let's let's read... Uh, anyways, yeah. Um, it, it's a little better than Rat Colony. But then you have Shadow Bone Apostle, which is just tutoring you up a demon and putting it on the battlefield. Um, if, you, if you have... What is it? Sacrifice six creatures named Shadow Bone Apostle. It doesn't say the stuff like, uh, well, you can tap four at sorcery speed, uh, not sorcery speed, at instant speed. Um, you don't even have to pay mana anymore. So I'm thinking by turn four, we start, uh, we start milling for 12 every turn at the end step, of course, because you can do this at instant speed. So you mill for at the end step uh so that's already they draw seven for to start the game they drew let's say three cards if you were on the play um they're at 50 you know how 50 divided by 12 is four four turns and you'll have the whole deck milled out and if you're playing your cards right you might even have uh some more cards to help you with this like drown secrets or um and Patience rebuilding, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for this persistent petitioner. I already told my buddy that I'm going to make a deck in standard for a persistent petitioner. Um, let's go into the next card. I, uh, I rally to battle. Cool. Creatures you control gain plus one, plus three until end of turn. Untap those creatures. It is three generic, one white. It's a instant and it's uncommon. Um, creatures you gain control, you control gain plus one, plus three. So it's, I like that it affects all your creatures, uh, especially because it's in white. We could see it in... Uh, in the aristocrats deck when you make spirits to give your spirits a big butt and I like that or if we wanted to we could put this in a normal white and black uh, deck with death touches death touchers and death touchers aren't known for having a big butt so now they can have their big butt you know um, I I like this for an instant it remind me a lot of um, of what did I just call this card? Let me make sure I'm not saying this is Rally Cry. Okay, Rally Cry. MTG. Maybe not Rally Cry. Maybe it was. Uh, it's not Adamant Will. It's. Darn! Make a stand. That's the one. Make a stand. Man, come on. You know, you should know already, Google, that I'm, ma I'm Googling magic cards, okay? Mega Stan um, was very similar, except for it was gain indestructible until end of turn. Uh, and I liked that. It's And, of course, you know, it's still in standard. I was thinking of Zendikar because that's the one I have. I don't have one from M19. Um, but, yeah, so I'm thinking about making a stand versus uh, Rally to Battle... I don't know, I guess... Oh, well, the whole untap those creatures, giving them a pseudo-vigilance, is kind of nice, too. Um, you could also tap all your creatures out, make your opponent think that, you know, you're, uh, 
your turn is over and that you, they can hit you in the face for a little bit or whatever, gain some life back if they want to, and then totally just kill their creatures by untapping those creatures, uh, untapping your creatures and unblocking with them. So that's that's rallying, uh, rally to battle, not rallying cry. Here is a, another new card that is in a different language. Um, Sentinel's Mark. It is one generic, one white for an enchantment aura, and it is uncommon. The card reaches, reach, re, reads, not reaches, reads, flash enchant creature, enchant creature gains plus one plus two in vigilance, a denim. If you cast a spell during your main phase, enchanted creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So, I like that they give you the option to flash this to give you a plus one plus two. Again, taking a look at making it a bigger butt, you know, I, I, I always like big butts and I cannot lie. Um, and then giving it vigilance is nice too. Uh, I I could e the vigilance parts make me even think that we could play this on our main phase, as the denim wants. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if people play this all not on their main phase just to get that bigger butt, and I uh, possibly kill their opponent's creature instead of instead of trading or the opponent's creature just being that much bigger than them. Um, then it could just absolutely change the course of the battle and that's what I like about this card hmm excuse me so elite arrester one white for a zero three creature human soldier and it's a common uh, pay one generic one blue tap target creature uh, tap elite arrester tap target creature hold it I need you I need to see your papers. That's what the flavor text reads. So it reminds me a lot of, um, I feel like I say this all the time, pacification array. Yeah, array. Um, pacification array, in fact, did the exact same thing, except for it was an artifact where this is just, you know, it's a body. Um, You could tap, hmm, the thing is, is that this would be a rare if it had, if it didn't have the tap part, of course, it would be a rare, but if you could somehow block with this creature and still tap a creature down um, while having to tap this down, then it would be different. The thing is that you wouldn't be able to use this during, you wouldn't need to use this during, um, during an attack phase, unless your opponent has a vigilant creature, um, and that is a way to get, get through those vigilant buddies, there's a lot of them out there, uh, not really used in the meta at the moment, but when white gets, uh, pumped, you'll see them come back again. Um, the next one, it, you, we see these almost every single time there's a Planeswalker. Domri's Notarog, three generic, one red, one green, creature, beast, trample. When Domri's Notarog enters the battlefield, you may search the library and or graveyard for a card named Domri City Smasher. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search the library this way, shuffle it. And the flavor text reads, good girl. I, I don't like these cards. They're all, it's, it, this is a rare but to put a rare, to put a rare on this is stupid to me. It sure it's a tutor. It's a it's basically a tutor with a five two and trample, uh, four five by the way, and to tutor, tutor a specific card. I just I don't I don't like cards like this. This is eh, eh, yeah that's that's all I'm saying. Um, charging warboard. One generic, one red, one green, creature boar, and it has uncommon. It does have haste, um, which I'm surprised that they're actually showing uh, the rule text for haste there, but that's interesting uh, that we need to re-up on haste, I guess. Um, as long as you control a Domery Planeswalker, Charging War Boar gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. Um, 
and then it shows the okay so you know what this is right this is if um a new player buys the buys the planeswalker deck because this is gonna be the the domri planeswalker deck this domri's not a ring and uh charging warboard is gonna be on and domri's uh play and walk planeswalker deck and a lot of newer players buy that because they're like oh cool planeswalker and they're not always the best but whatever um that's the reason why they have these rule texts it's three one by the way that comes out for three i for with haste um and of course it gives plus one plus one has trample if you have a domri out i just eh, eh like i said anyways macabre mockery Ooh, i like this card guys Two generic, one black, one red. Put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Uh, the Rakdos put the fun in funeral. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Um, even the whole acrobat jester looking thing and they're holding up a dead body. I love everything about this card. Um, being able to just bring out, in the, you know, if an opponent's playing Enter the Battlefield effects, which I was going to do with that March, uh, Mirror's March, um, if an opponent's playing a lot of Enter the Battlefield effects that are awesome, like, let's say, for instance, you play a Ravenous Chupacabra, um, well, Ravenous Chupacabra would come out, it would destroy its uh, creature and opponent controls, and then be able to deal four damage either to face or to a, a creature, and a lot of times, that will deal... Uh, enough damage to kill that creature so being able to do that for four mana um and that's just a, you know an example um is really good to me uh, i i like this card macabre mockery um forbidding spirit one generic two white creature spirit cleric and it is an uncommon when forbidding spirit enters the battlefield into your next turn Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays two generic for each of those creatures. You will respect the dead, it reads. 3-3 three, three is its power and toughness. So, it gives you an ability of Bayard MTG. Yeah, uh, it gives you an ability of Bayard. Well, almost. It actually gives you a better ability of Bayard having to pay mana to tell... To do, you know, for their opponent, for, blah, 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 for their creatures to be able to attack you. Um, I forget exactly. I guess that's the taxes part of a death and taxes deck. Um, is to just tax them so that way they can't play crap. Uh, and that's that's kind of what this card's saying is, is hey, you know, if you want to deal damage to me, you're just gonna have to not, not really play your turn. Um. It, but I wish I wish it wasn't until your next turn that's the only part right but I guess if you see them building up their board of tokens or whatever and you have only one turn left this gives you another turn to survive sure maybe um okay okay one more thing I could see this also being in a weird white blue and green so bet colored deck um, I, I can see this being in that for the quasi duplicates and just constantly making your opponent not be able to attack, kind of fog them out a little bit. Um, I can see that. That, that would be, that'd be pretty funny and interesting, but I could see it. Um, so we're on the last three cards. Like I said, not a lot of cards were dropped today. Uh, read Genesis, three generic, two green, instant, and it is an uncommon return up to two target permanents from your uh, your graveyard to your hand when you get right down to it the difference between death and life is just a membrane enclosed environment maintained by a metabolic metabolic process uh, goloston simic biomancer so <laughs> Recollect is a card that's very similar to this. <sighs> I'm so sorry, guys. 
Recollect is a card very similar to this. Um, return target card from your gra uh, graveyard to your hand. Um, it's just a double recollect. So, yeah, that's that's going to be good even for a Simic deck, especially for a Simic deck. That would be really good. Um, Cavalcade of Calamity. One generic, one red. It is an enchantment. It is an uncommon. Whenever a creature you control is with power one or less attacks, Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage to the player uh, or planeswalker that creature is attacking. Let the Demir worry about Witness for the Rakdos. Witnesses for the Rakdos screams out as applause. Let the Demir worry about Witnesses for the Rakdos scream out. Screams count as applause. Okay. Well, that's interesting flavor, guys. <laughs> um, I do like the the photo the art on this is really good there's a giant and all these uh well it kind of looks like let's zoom in it kind of looks like he's in a chandelier does it not <laughs> um and he's on fire that's what it looks like it looks like he's a giant chin and chandelier on fire or maybe even an ogre but anyways um Oh, no, they're lighting him on fire. These are people up here. Look at that. But anyways, uh, whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, that's going to be the toughie there because I can see this in like a red, green, white token build. Um, dealing, just pinging damage to the, to the opponent's face. Um, but I don't really see this in just a... A red build by itself, or maybe a Rakdos build, maybe. Um, and that would be a great way to get Spectacle off. And that's the real thing people were thinking about this card is, you know, you could get Spectacle off on it. Um, but, I don't know, man. I just, I, you know, Power 1 or less is getting me right there. Um, may, maybe a Mardu deck. Oh, that's what they're thinking here, guys. A Mardu deck. Ooh, Mardu coming back in standard, guys. I tell you what, Mardu vehicles, I miss you. Um, the last card of the day, guys. Eyes everywhere, two generic, one blue enchantment. It is a uncommon. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Um, pay, you can pay five generic, one blue, exchange control of eyes everywhere, and target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. They've got my eye. Uh, uh, they've got eyes inside my head. <laughs> oh man, I I feel like I always am bringing up this video. There was a video I made, guys, called uh, "Steal Your Stuff" version one, and version two is in the making. Okay, I gotta get the comments and everything ready for it. Um. It is in the making. Uh, it, it and this this will drop uh, before I make version two. Let's be honest. I'm probably not making many standard decks before the drop. Okay. Um, when eyes everywhere drops. Oh man, dude! Five generic, one blue. A eh? five generic, one blue. A. Eh? Um. Yeah, Eyes Everywhere is going to become my baby. It basically is a, at the beginning of your upkeep, Scry 1. That part reminds me of, um, do 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 Search for Azkanta. Yeah, misspelled Azkanta, but that's fine. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your grave. So, this, for Search for Azkanta was a one generic, one blue, and then turned into a land that surveilled, um, Eyes everywhere scries, and it and then it, it even goes better. Given that your opponent will start being able to scry or whatever, that's not really you, you don't really care about that. Um, if you're not playing against a blue opponent, that's another thing because they could use this back against you if they're playing blue. But if you're not playing this against a blue opponent, they'll never get this triggered. There's this activated ability off or anything, so. 
I I really do like eyes everywhere. It's gonna be a card I'll be brewing around, so you guys just stick tuned. But guys, if you made it this far in the video, I first off thank you. Um, but please do give us a like, subscribe, and uh, comment down below to let me know how you guys, uh, what cards you guys are thinking about um, brewing with. What's your what's your most anticipated? Let me let me put a question out there for the comment section. What is your most anticipated uh, card from RNA, from Ravnica Allegiance? Um, but yeah, guys, this has been the end of the video. Just please like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Sneaky Narcotic, signing off.